Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video I want to take a look at Elemental Control Paladin. So Control Paladin is a pretty popular deck right now. You can play it with Nezoth, without Nezoth. You can also take a little bit of different approach to playing Control Paladin. You can play it with Elemental Synergies. And I think this is a lot of fun to play this deck and it's also pretty powerful quite similar in power level to the regular Control Paladin and actually mirror matches between these two are, are also a lot of fun. So what is an Elemental Control Paladin made of? The deck contains the classic Control Paladin board control tools, so you have Doomsayers, you have Equality, Spiromancers, you have Consecrations, you have multiple ways to clear up the board. But then in this deck you also have these Elemental Synergies, so there are a couple of good things that you get when you decide to play with elementals. You get Servant of Kalimos. Servant of Kalimos is hugely powerful. Uh, with the number of elementals there are currently, Servant of Kalimos has a 53% chance to offer you Ragnaros Light Lord, which is the only Paladin class elemental. So you can often pick up some more aid aids. And elemental synergies also offer you some direct damage. There's Fireplume Phoenix and there's Blaze Caller. So there's that, and they also offer you some more defensive tools early in the game in the form of Tar Creeper. Although this does mean that with Tar Creeper and the number of 3 drops in the deck that Wickerframe Burn Blizzard doesn't make the cut. So there's also, you lose a little bit of that, but you get some Tar Creepers. Overall the deck is not running that many elementals, you have to be careful about how to activate the elemental synergies and this single firefly and the flame elemental that it gives can be really important tools to activate those elemental synergies later in the game. It is also of note that there are no hydrologists in this deck. So hydrologist is a really powerful card, discovers a secret. It's especially good say with Nessot, for example, you get the secret out and you get Tyrion, Tyrion gets getaway coded back to your hand, you replay it, get another Tyrion for Nessoth. But this deck doesn't have Nessoth to take advantage of this. It's also used often in regular control paladin without Nessoth. But with already with Servant of Kalimas and Stonehill Defender both giving you discover options and giving you that additional value. This deck doesn't need Hydrologist quite as much as other control paladin decks and leaving out Hydrologist also makes you grab proof. So you can't get that early swing against you when you played Hydrologist on 2 and then the opponent plays a Hunger Crab on it. So how do you mulligan with this deck? Well, most of the time you are assuming that you're defending against aggro and Doomsayer, Tar Creeper and Rallying Blade are the three most important tools against aggro. Early Doomsayer can just be so good. But if you don't have any of them, you can also consider keeping something like Firefly, Stonehill Defender, Consecration, in some matchups especially. Uh, Firefly could align with a Rallying Blade, for example, to deal 4 damage if you need that, and uh, some things that you can do, situational things. If you need to be the aggressor, well, this deck doesn't really do early aggression. Uh, how this deck wins? One is either you win by outlasting the opponent, so you just run them out of resources, then they are going to be playing one card at a time and you're throwing down powerful elementals and then you overpower them. It doesn't really go to fatigue that often, but they just run out of means to carry on the attack and then you can, you can take the control. But if you need to be the aggressor with this deck, then that really happens in the mid game. With the Servant of Kalimos, Spikerid Steed, Blaze Caller, Ragnos Light Lord, maybe multiple Ragnos Light Lords and Tyrion. That's where you start to really roll out. So ideally you would have something like Tar Creeper into Phoenix into Servant of Kalimos. Some kind of curve like that, which then enables you to roll out that aggression in the mid game. Overall, it's a lot of fun to play this deck, I really think so. So let's go ahead and take a look at some gameplay to see what it really looks like in action. And remember, if you enjoy this video, then please like it and subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's go take a look at that gameplay. I think I'll keep Pyromancer Equality. I have to assume this is an aggro druid. <laughs> and I have to assume that I'm going to need a board clear. It can of course be a jade druid as well. Mm. 
I mean, I couldn't choose silver into the thing from below because it wouldn't even kill it and wouldn't achieve anything. So that was the thing. If he buffs this, I think I just hit face. Even if he buffs this, I can still kill it with the rallying blade. And he can take the trade no matter what. If he doesn't have a buff, then I'm in a bit better spot. I think Rallying Blade is to play here. Let's start taking down these minions now. We want as few minions as possible. A Tar Creeper. Interesting. Well, this Fire Bloom Phoenix is pretty timely. Because now with that one I can actually take down the Tar Creeper. But I have a bunch of AoE and clears in my hand. So I should be okay here. If he doesn't do anything too dramatic this turn I can just play Servant of Kalimus next turn. That does not count as anything too dramatic yet. But druids can do druid things. In this case, that kind of druid things. How scared am I of this? That's 10, ten damage on board. And he can just trade a 4 1 into the servant. When I could Pyromancer Equality, the Pyromancer Equality is also my means of dealing with a Bitter Tide Hydra. As long as I don't find a peacekeeper. I think I can afford to play the servant this turn. Light Lord or Blaze Caller. Let's pick up the Light Lord. I believe he's going to commit more to the board and then I will clear. I'm not in any danger yet. Interesting play. Not quite what I expected. Not quite what I expected at all. Does he have another one in hand? No, there's so many ways I can go here. I guess I could go Pyromancer Consecration. But then what if he has a living mana? If I spend the Consecration, that means that I have to spend the equality to deal with the living mana. Pyromancer Consecration does ensure that no more damage is coming right now. I guess Pyromancer Consecration is fine. Let's clean up that board. I think I'm cool being at 7 for now. I have the Forbidden Healing if I need to heal. Which will also deal 1 AoE. Unless he does something. That will pull out patches. Interesting times. I probably want to use the forbidden healing this turn. So the servant will trade away one of these. Do I want to heal for 14 or am I fine healing for 10? I actually go to heal for 12. I'm going to play a flame elemental here. That can help me trade with something. Then heal up for 12. This should be good enough. Still have access to Pyromancer Equality. And he really, really wants to hit face. That's interesting, because now I can play the Ragnar's Light Lord. I could also play Tar Creeper and Servant for the same 8 mana. That might even be stronger. Light Lord, or not. Light Lord would heal me up to 24. 
I'll go to Servant of Calibus and Tar Creeper. Let me up some additional Light Lords here. Maybe a Gedon. Gedon is interesting in this matchup. I can sacrifice these minions. What are those two cards that he has been holding on to? I think there might be a second Savage Roar. The Savage Roar play that he made makes me think that there's another Savage Roar. There probably isn't a living mana he would have played it already. So there's the living mana. And I can well afford to go down to 14, so... Let's just drop the gate on here. Get some face. That deals with the living mana board. And we also deal with any any subsequent living mana boards. Get on being damaged by one means that the Light Lord heal can miss. But I guess Light Lord is still the play. Because Light Lord sets up an alternative lethal, even if he can deal with Gedon somehow. Even if he has a taunt. And he would need to have 11 from hand and he already used the swipe, so there's no way for him to have 11 from hand. Well, now that the Light Lord even high rolled to my face, it's even better. Alright. There we go. Let's see. Another shaman. Let's see what kind of shaman this one is going to be. An aggressive one. Double five flies. Double five flies still die to a Doomsayer. So I guess it's time to drop a Doomsayer. Even if he has a flame tongue totem, that's only six damage. But he can just roll a totem and hit face. That's the only thing he can do. What when I'm ready to subscribe? <laughs> Thanks. Well, he could have devolved this, but that's pretty low value. Alright, Stonehill Defender time. Whiffed. Well, Psychotron is the only one of these. I guess I could have gotten Shield Bearer for, to be a target for a Spike with Steed, but Spike with Steed overall is pretty bad against Shaman because of Devolve. Nothing I can do this turn, that's just such a terrible turn. I guess I'll hero power and hit. I could play a preemptive doomsayer, but I don't have much to do next turn either. Subscribing. The real trick, take a look around, there is a sub button actually available. So if you are so inclined, then because I got the sub button yesterday, then you are now actually able to subscribe. I think the Doomsayer is too low value. That's definitely a questionable question you can ask. Is Was Doomsayer here good enough value to play? And there's an argument to be made that maybe it was. That dust devil. That's a pretty painful fellow. He might have a... He might have a Devolve. So, Consecration is the safe play to prevent me from taking 10 to the face. Or 16 to the face from this one with Bloodlust. But let's go with the Psychotron. If he doesn't have a Devolve here... And if he has a Devolve, then at least he cannot Bloodlust on the same turn. But that was a pretty good one drop from the Maelstrom portal. Does he get a Taunt Totem? He gets the Taunt Totem. And the thing.
And next turn he can play the double gangster evolve combo. The real trick just subscribed. Thank you, the real trick. I can save the equality. I can hit here. Play Consecration. Removes all the taunts. Doesn't kill the flame tongue totem. And then I can hero power. I could have also played the preemptive doomsayer, but that would just delay his combo by a turn. Now he needs more taunts. And he save the flame tongue totem. He has another thing from below. Sure. I think I'll take that seven. I think I will take that seven. I still don't want to use my equality yet. Could be a mistake. Definitely some questionable things going on here. So I just played the Jade Lightning. I'll try the Doomsayer. I could have also played the Tar Creeper. But let's try this. He needs a Devolve Jade Lightning. Devolve or Jade Lightning to deal with that. And if he doesn't deal with that, then I can drop Tyrion next turn. Both things from below are already gone. He could devolve Tyrion into a 7 drop. That's a possibility. But 7 drops are generally pretty good still. Here comes his evolve combo. And I have the equality saved up for this. Not that Maelstrom board was bad for me. So will Tyrion trade away the 6-6, six, six, which is the strongest minion? I have the option to Pyromancer Equality. I could push 10 to face and Pyromancer Equality. He has 3 cards remaining. If I take a value trade, then Pyromancer Equality will be the only way I can deal with Hemet. I think I will not take a value trade, I will take the full trade here. Like this. And get some stuff on the board. I might even be able to use equality without the Pyrobancer when I have a bunch of tokens on the board. If I need to. We'll see. Alright, so the first combo was dealt with quite nicely. Second combo is coming. Alright, but now I have the Pyromancer equality still in hold. Does he get any Divine Shields? Nope. Do I need to use the Pyromancer? If I use just the equality, I can kill much everything. I can also play a servant of Kalimos. <laughs> Mod Mod just subscribed. Oh Mod Mod, thank you for your subscription and support. It is appreciated. I don't need to use the Pyromancer. I can just do this and trade away the big ones. I can trade away that one too. I can grab a Ragnar's Light Lord here. I think this is fine. This is fine. Now both evolves are gone. He could get a white board and go from there with a Bloodlust. Okay, so he's preparing for a bloodlust. How much damage does, does the bloodlust do? Oh, well, it also has spiked steed. 
So let's say I tr trade there, I trade there. It would have 7, 8, 9, 9 plus 12 is 21. And Rack Light Lord heals me to 22. That is risky. Come bring out the tree tree. What if he has a devolve? There are risks everywhere. There are risks no matter what I do. I think this is the play. Sorry, it took me a while to figure that out. But I believe this is the play. This is 10. If he has Devolve and Bloodlust, this is 10 to face. And if he doesn't have Devolve, he cannot get through. Without having a Devolve, he can't push through. And if he has Devolve and Bloodlust, it's 10. I still think there's a Bloodlust. I only have one spell. I can heal up the Pyromancer, right? Don't really make much of a difference. If I Peacekeeper... I need to heal myself. Peacekeeper, trade away the Earth Elemental. Heal myself. Now I can trade away the Earth Elemental here. This one one can hit there. And I can forbidden healing my face, which will then kill off that one totem. So leaves him with just four minions. Ouch, this is this is getting really really close. So now it's going to be the bloodlust. But that bloodlust, it's going to be so much work for him to push through. He can clear the board and have two minions remaining, but he will have an empty hand. Interesting choice. So the Peacekeeper will trade there. Light Lord Hero Power. Okay, I think I think I'm going to get have this. Light Lord hopefully heals the Peacekeeper now. Actually, that would be better because that would prevent trades. But he has already played the evolves. He has already played. He doesn't. He just doesn't have a lot left. He simply does not have a lot left there. Oh, Blaze Caller or Harrison. I can activate the Blaze Caller later. I think I want the card draw. More Light Lord sounds good. This Light Lord will trade away that one. Alright. I think I will have this. Next turn I can play another Light Lord. Oh dear, he might be able to kill this Light Lord now if he top takes a Jade Lightning, Jade Claws, or Flame Tank Totem. And Blaze Color is not active right now. So he picked up some really big taunt because he is not playing it yet. That's the only thing I can assume here. And he still has another Bloodlust left in the deck. So I think I want to clean up this board. Play more Light Lords. Now there's going to be some kind of a big Taunt minion. Oh, missed the heals on Light Lord. That's the one I wanted to hit, but only hit the others. This gives him an out to kill this Light Lord with the Jade Lightning he has in hand now. 
Man, if the Light Lords had healed it, if one of the Light Lords had hit this one, so there was a 33% turn, then a 50% turn, I lost both. But I have a Blaze Call to kill that Jade, so it's still not all bad. That's still the Taunt minion. That was a strange trade. I guess it was done to... Do I now push face for 14? Yeah, I don't have all day to set up lethals. It's time to push. And now, there's that one taunt minion. But there's some pretty big stuff over here. Oh, devolve is not going to help usually. Those were two high mana cost minions. I was unable to play for a long time because I was riding a lot about Hearthstone. It's going to come out and going to come out on Hearthead. Hopefully this week or next week, so some of my riding will be some pretty interesting stuff coming up there. I will be I will tell you more when it when it's ready. Or everything is ready from my end, but they're they're still doing editing and publishing on that. So priest, what kind of priest will be interesting? If it's a heavy control priest, I've seen a lot of those lately. Harrison is good against Medivh, because Medivh into free from Amber, that's just punishing. But I have the Harrison now, so that's fine. Looks like some kind of a control priest. I can't imagine many other decks going this slow. Maybe I will go with some keep it arm still. We'll see. He's going to have a lot of board clears. Dragonfire potions. Oh, it's a dragon priest. Alright. Do I just Doomsayer here? He could have a Shadow Word Pain. Because other than the Doomsayer, I don't have that many good ways to deal with the Twilight Drake. If there's a Shadow Word Pain, he kills the Doomsayer. He trades away the Stonehill Defender. I think I'm fine with that. Let's see. So Shadow Word Pain here could could deal with the Doomsayer. Mass Dispel. Wow, that was an interesting... Is this a Highlander Priest? So could this one be running Kasakus? Stuff like that. It could. I also have the option to coin Tarim. Then I could trade away this one. He could play a Dragonfire Potion next turn. It's going to him a little bit, little bit too premature. I think I like it. Let's just coin to him. Hit some face. Let's get some action going. See where this one goes. It's not really a board that you want to play Dragonfire Potion on yet. Doesn't seem to achieve too much. That might be a Dragonfire Potion that he's discovering for his future turns. I could play a Firefly to activate the Servant of Kalimus. Let's say he plays the Dragonfire Potion. I can play that Firefly. I can Hero Power. I can use a Rallying Blade to kill his minion. Oh, maybe I didn't even need to kill that minion. Did I even need to kill that minion? Was that a mistake? He's going to Dragonfire Potion this board. I could have put him down to 11. But I only had 6 coming anyway. So it's not like I had a complete answer there. 
let's discover a Ragnaros Light Lord. Or let's not discover a Light Lord. Discover an Osrook. That was not from the Shadow Visions, by the way, so. I think he might have another. Primordial Dragon, I have 9 damage here. I'm still going to go with the Equality Consecration, right? And push that 9 to face, because then I can place Caller next turn. He needs to have a Priest of the Feast in hand. Let's see if he has the Priest of the Feast. I want to push as much damage as I can, more than just to 5. And I want to play Flame Elemental to activate the Elemental Synergies. Because now he needs to heal for at least 3, so he has to have a Priest of the Feast or he's dead. Okay, I guess he can also have an Alexstrasza. I'll give him that, he can have an Alexstrasza too. Well, that's interesting. I didn't expect him to have an Alexstrasza. Really didn't. So if I play Osrok, he hits it with the Alexstrasza and he plays a hole in Nova. And that clears my board. So I think what I need to do is play Peacekeeper into Steed on this one. He can still kill this with the Bookworm or with some other things, but... He cannot, probably cannot play AoE and that one on the same turn. That means that the Blaze Caller is not going to be active. Let's try. Push that 7 to face. But now I don't have the Blaze Caller for next turn. So he could have a way around this. Let's see, maybe he has an answer from my deck. Greater healing potion from Shadow Visions. Wow. So he's at 20, I can deal 12. Does he have another Dragonfire potion? Let's go with Stonehill Defender first. He has another Dragonfire potion, that could be really good for him. Tyrion maybe? I don't want to give him good potion of madness targets. What about the Grime Street Protector? Doesn't activate the elemental synergies. Doesn't die the Dragonfire potion. That's actually pretty interesting. Let's try this. Because now these two fellows have Divine Shield, so they're a bit more difficult to deal with. He cannot have two copies of AoE. Maybe he can. Consecration into Dragonfire Potion. Now he can Dragonfire Potion, but if he has a hole in Nova. No, Holy Nova only kills two of the minions. I don't know. I really, I have really thought for a long time that I would be able to win this game, but he just seems to hang on. One way or another. Seven, eight, nine, ten, but now it's over. Phew. He just was surprisingly hanging on. But finally it ended. There. Able to take that one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.